So with Claire running for the Senate, you all deserve to know where she comes from. Dad worked in a mill in southwest Missouri. They couldn't give us much, but we got what we needed. Integrity, hard work, guts. In Washington, they'll be pressured to forget where she comes from. Well, that's not going to happen. Fight for what you believe is right. Mom knows that. Proud to say I taught her. I'm Claire McCaskill, and I approve this message. Well, if we, if we elect enough Democrats, we'll get some gun safety stuff done. They won't let us vote on it. We've got 60 votes for a number of measures that would help with gun safety. But McConnell won't let them come to the floor. Well, like, like yeah. bomb stocks and ARs and high capacity Universal mags. Background. All of that. All it's of that. crazy. It's nuts. The NRA will be all in for my opponent. So um, another good reason for everybody to suit up and work hard because they are going to be all in for him. They'll spend millions of dollars on his race. They always have spent millions of dollars against me. But if we have the kind of year I think we might have, I think we could actually be in a position that we could get votes on this stuff on the floor. And we'd get 60. McConnell knows it. He just doesn't want to put it on the floor because then it goes to the House and then it's awkward because all those House members are total NRA folks. So, so, so you would be on board with, with bump, the bump stock? Of course, of course. Bump stock. Oh, I've voted High capacity for, mags. I've, I've voted for most of those things before. So for a ban? Oh, yeah. Great. I've been very upfront about all my positions. In fact, now I remember that very individual talking to me, trying to get me to say, trying to get me to tell him to say something different than what my positions are. And I said, no, you just got to tell the people on the doors it is what it is. I've made no secret that I think we can support the Second Amendment and universal background checks and banning bump stocks. My gun record is out in the open for everyone to see. What's really telling about this is how, how far they're willing to go to fraudulently embed somebody in my campaign. Um, that's startling. I've never seen that in a U.S. Senate campaign before. In this Angelo Pacheco from Kansas City, welcome. Hi. Uh, what will you do to stop gun violence affecting my peers across the nation? Would you vote for more school funding to provide more security? And will you, Senator McCaskill, vote to, for an all-out ban, like you said in last week's Project Veritas video? And while, since you brought it up, let me just say about the Veritas videos. There was nothing in those videos that were bad from my perspective, because people in Missouri know where I stand on these issues. They got some kids behind closed doors talking out of school. Big deal. I'll tell you what was a big deal. They fraudulently embedded themselves in my campaign for weeks, for weeks, misrepresenting who they were. They got into our computers, proprietary information, for 20 hours. Who knows what they stole? They weren't there to help me. They were there to help Josh Hawley. And the idea that a, a complaint has been filed with the Attorney General's office, and when we called to ask about the complaint, they said, call the campaign. The Attorney General's office cannot allow there to be a new normal that fraud can be committed in anybody's campaign. I don't care if it's somebody I'm for or somebody I'm against. That somebody can come in and commit fraud and get in your computers and the Attorney General does nothing. That cannot be the new normal. But I want to give both of you 60 seconds, but go ahead, Mr. Hall. Thank you. There's the Washington two-step right there. Senator McCaskill is caught saying something on video and that she blames me. Her initial reaction was to accuse me of fraud, to accuse me personally of fraud, which is absolutely outrageous and totally not true. And then to ask for the state of Missouri, I guess, to appoint a prosecutor with taxpayer money to go after her political opponents. Now, I know it's become fashionable on campuses for liberal Democrats to shut down speakers they don't like, but I have never heard of the state appointing a prosecutor with taxpayer money to go after a political opponent. And to accuse me of, I, I just think it's, again, we're at the desperation phase of Senator McCaskill's campaign. Ms. McCaskill? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm not asking for uh, a lot of, ta by the way, he's appointed special prosecutors all the time. He's, his office, there's been three different articles written in the last two weeks about the mess in his office right now. He's in a hurry. He's never even gone in a courtroom and tried a criminal case in his life. So maybe he should be appointing other prosecutors. But the point is that this was a fraud. This isn't about the tape. People in Missouri know where I stand. I've done 52 town halls. I've walked in anywhere in Missouri, said, come on in, ask me any question. I'm not afraid to tell anybody where I stand. I am afraid of an attorney general that looks the other way when somebody comes in and steals proprietary information out of somebody's computer. I do want to ask a follow-up here real quick. So uh, in, indulge me for a few moments, if you would. 
Ms. McCaskill, do you blame Mr. Hawley's campaign for that video? No, I don't blame him for that video, but what I do blame him for is when a complaint is filed under the Merchandise Practicing Act, which he talks about and touts all the time, with a clear prima facie case has been laid out, that instead of immediately saying, of course, we'll look into it, they refer us to his campaign as if this was not a serious matter. That's what I'm complaining and, about. And Mr. Hawley, did your campaign have anything to do with that video? Absolutely not. And to accuse me of fraud, which is what Senator McCaskill did, she said that I committed fraud that I participated in a fraud. She said that on television. I just, I didn't again, say that on television. We, it's on Color 10. We'll, the video is widely available. I'm sure it's being sent even now. So I, I invite you to look at the record. But uh, these kind of desperate attacks are sad to see, um, especially at the end of it's been a long 36-year uh, career for Senator McCaskill. But I hope that this isn't how she's going to go out. Senator, I'd like to get your response to a story that's breaking tonight that discusses a whistleblower that's related to your husband's businesses with Sugar Creek. It's a whistleblower that gave a recorded deposition in yeah. 2011, and he alleges that your husband was actually closing deals related to tax credits tied to stimulus cash in the Senate room, in the Senate dining room. Do you deny that? Do you have any response to that? Yeah. I, I, first of all, this is Dana Lowe. She's working really hard for my opponent. Uh, she is a campaign operative. It's not a campaign operative. Do you, can you and prove that, he, please? The, are you talking about Craig Woods, the felon? Oh, well, yes, Craig Woods, the, the, Woods, the man who worked with your Craig husband's Woods, company. And uh, I'd like for you to prove that. I'll I tell you what we will do operative. is we'll be happy to give you an interview after this is over about his felony record and how he hid that from my husband. He's been convicted twice and in prison for embezzlement, lied about it, and um, he stole hundreds and thousands of dollars from two different companies he worked for. But do you, it, do you deny that it, your husband was cutting deals absolutely. in the Absolutely. What a ridiculous thing to say. Oh, Senator. 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 To make sure they're not. Do you regret supporting Hillary Clinton in 2016? Uh, you know, that's a hard question. Um, you know, obviously my state disagreed with me on that. I thought she was certainly had the breadth and depth of experience that qualified her. This book, Plenty Ladylike, is a brutal account of ambition and a whole lot of strategy. The idea is I want young women to feel comfortable with their ambition, to go for it, uh, to never worry about whether or not they're being ladylike enough. And that's why it's called Plenty Ladylike. Follow at, at Plenty Ladylike or go to PlentyLadylike.com and be part of this movement so that young women everywhere never again are marginalized by telling them they're just not ladylike enough.